Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my non-fiction November TBR. So I do have a few other things that I'm going to read as well. I'm going to run through those really fast and then I'm going to talk about my non-fiction November reading for 2023. Um, so I have two buddy reads that I am doing. I am doing the third book in the Love at Stake series by Carolyn Sparks. This is Be Still My Vampire Heart. Um, I'm doing this buddy read with Berna at Berna's Bookish Adventures. So um, we are enjoying this series so far and um, I'm kind of excited for this. So, cause I think it has to do with one of the vampires that is kind of the security expert, but one of the older ones. So that'll be kind of fun. And again, those are kind of funny um, paranormal romance um, books. I just love them. They're it usually takes place in uh, New York. I'm sure this one takes place there too. Yeah. So, it, oh, it might have another one where it deals with the CIA's uh, stakeout uh, thing. So that'll be fun. Uh, the other one I'm reading is the third book in um, the Alona Andrews series, um, the Edge series. This is Face Edge. This follows one of the cousins from the main character in the second book. So uh, it's his story. And then this has to do with an urban fantasy where there's a place between our world, which is called The Broken, and um, the edge is kind of this in-between land between that and the weird, which is like the place with all the magic. So the edge has some magic, but it's different. And this usually follows characters within that kind of gray zone um, between the broken and the weird. So anyway, um, they're really good um, urban fantasy, also with romance, heavy romance, um, with a lot of action because it's Alona Andrews. So I'm reading that with, sorry, with Tia and all the books. So we are continuing our Alona Andrews journey. So this is book three in that four book series. And then um, really quick, I would like to try to get to the cloisters by Katie Hayes. I've heard mixed things on this one, so I want to read it to see if I want it or get rid of it. This is, a, I think, more of a dark academia one, but it has to do with a museum that she ha goes to New York City to uh, work in, but she gets moved to this this uh, medieval art museum that has something to do with, I think, with a tarot deck or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's it sounds interesting. I don't read a lot of dark academia, but this one I bought um, at one point, and I'd like to get to it kind of in the fall <laughs> season. Uh, so I'd like to do that. I'd also like to read some historical fiction, um, The Wolf Den by um, Elodie Harper. So this is book one in this series. I'm not sure what the series is called, um, but I know book three is coming out soon or has come out, I don't remember. And I never bought book two because I haven't read book one yet. So um, this has to do with, I think it's uh, Pompeii, or something. I yeah, Pompeii and it has to do with the I think women in a in a brothel and I don't think it I think it goes in ways that it I, I don't know where it's going. I just wanted to read it and I haven't got to it. So I don't read a lot of historical fiction right now, so I'm trying to get back into it. And I'd also like to continue my Susanna Kearsley reading because I haven't I, I only I tried one this year and I DNF'd it. So that wasn't for me, but I want to try the Rose Garden, which is every, like a lot of people's favorites. And this is one where I think the woman goes back in time um, on the Cornish coast or something like that. But I don't know. Hers are kind of have this like magical um, kind of different timelines kind of thing most of the time. Um, so I'm going to try that. And that is Cooper's butt. Thank you. Anyway, so let's talk about my nonfiction November um, reading. So... Um, the four prompts that it okay so nonfiction november is a reading initiative to just read more nonfiction than you normally do i do try to read one a month but that doesn't always happen but so i'm gonna i try to up my november my, my nonfiction reading in november sorry there are cat here he just came by and of course he's scratchy hey hey, hey. Uh -uh. anyway <laughs> not going well with the new location anyway so um so nonfiction november is put on by a book olive and she usually gives us four prompts to work on for this. And so um, uh, the words this year are fraud, web, capital, and display. So I did not find one for fraud. So I'm going to, at the end of the video, kind of scan the shelf for you guys. And then if you see something that right off you think is a, is fraud, I can use for that. You could let me know. Maybe I'll put that on my TBR. I'm not sure. So I, because I didn't see anything right off. 
And um, maybe I'm just not feeling imaginative. I can't figure it out. Um, but I did for the second word is web. I'm going to read uh, Murder at Teal's Pond by David Bushman and Mark T. Gibbons. This is about a young woman in 1908 who was found dead and then all the secrets that are that her she, something was going on in her life that was very secretive so I said kind of web of lies kind of thing secrets you know that's where I'm going with this this is on my six nonfiction books I want to read this year so I would be checking off one of the ones I want to get to um, for capital I'm going to read Astoria um, John Jacob Astor and Thomas Jefferson's Lost Pacific Empire, A Story of Wealth, Ambition, and Survival by Peter Stark. Um, I borrowed this from my dad a while ago and I want to get it back to him so I want to read this and I'm, I'm picking this for capital because um, Astor was very rich and um, again it talks about wealth and empire and stuff so that's where I'm going with this. I don't know really really what it's about so um, we're just gonna see. I don't know. <laughs> it's just it was one my dad had for a while and I, I wanted to read it and I need to get to it. So we're trying to get through the books I borrowed from my family. And then the last one is Display. Oh, that really, taking that book away from there, made that bright. Um, I'm going to read um, The Phantom Atlas, The Greatest Myths, Lies, and Blunders on Maps by Edward Brooke Hitchings. So I read usually one map book a year for nonfiction November. And this is the one I want to read this year for Display because this one has a lot of pictures and maps and things. So it's really pretty. I bought this when it came out many years or a couple years ago and I just haven't got to it. He has like five or six other books that are kind of in line with this that I want to know if I want to get them or if this is just going to be the only one I buy from from this. But I've had it for so long and I, I just need to get to this. So this is going to be my book for display. So then I do have a few other nonfiction books I'd like to get to. So, you know, that's kind of... I did read earlier... Um, in October, um, The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor, which has to do with octopus. So um, I do have one more octopus book that I haven't read before because I have already read the Simon Montgomery, Soul of an Octopus. I think I read another one. I can't remember. But the one I haven't read is Other Minds, The Octopus, The Sea, and the Deep Origins of Consciousness by Peter Godfrey Smith. So I this was one of the resources that... Um, Ray Naylor used in his book that I owned on my shelf that I hadn't read. So I would like to read this one. I think it has to do with um, talking about the, you know, about octopus and their intelligence and their consciousness. So I would like to get to this because after reading that book, I want to read an octopus book. Um, I have a couple writing books. One is Shut Up and Write the Book by uh, Jenna Morrissey. So she is a, a, a fantasy romance author of the the saviors I don't remember now I care I don't I haven't read the books but I've seen her on YouTube she has a big YouTube channel about writing and stuff and um, I used to watch her a lot I just haven't read recently but she did have this book come out earlier this year and I haven't got to it NaNoWriMo starts on the first so I will be doing non-fiction or um, national novel writing month this month as well which is always I do <laughs> nonfiction and uh, write fiction at the same time. But I thought if I got a couple writing books in here, maybe if I'm feeling like I'm having trouble with my writing, they might there might be some tips or something I might use. So I'm, I really like to get to this since I did pre-order this and I do want to get to that. I just picked up Why I Write um, by George Orwell. So this is just a little um, kind of essay on why he writes or when why he wrote because <laughs> you know, he's gone but it has to do political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable and to give an appearance of solidarity to pure wind so I, I'm kind of interested in this because again he is the author of Animal Farm in 1984 and I want to see what he says in here and I have heard about this and I got it on sale so anyway so I did want to read that as well and then um, I'm hoping to pick up one, either Horizon or Arctic Dreams. I'm not sure which one yet, uh, by Barry Lopez. I've had, I just, I got this one at a library book sale and I think I had bought the other one last year and I haven't got to them yet. And I know they're nature books of some sort, um, which is kind of my, some of my favorite nonfiction. So this one's talking about, um, places around the world, I think, um, moves through six regions of the world and, talks about things from 
I don't know, all different kinds of nature things. Anyway, um, I don't remember what Arctic Dreams are on. I'm sure it's on the Arctic or stuff, some sort. So if you guys have read either Horizon or Arctic Dreams, let me know which one you liked that I should read first. Um, but I'm hoping to get to one of those. And if I have time and I can get myself to uh, read this because it's pretty heavy. Um, it's a heavy book too, but I'm, I have it on audio as well. Um, but I just, I never finished it when it came out and I bought the hardcover and everything. And I would literally like to make progress in Red Comet, The Short Life and Bla Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark. So I got, I only got like a hundred pages in. I think that's, yeah, yeah, hundred, oh, sorry, 190 pages in. And then I had to take a break because I was just hurting my heart. So, um, Again, Sylvia Plath is one of those people who I have read several things on and um, uh, The Bell Jar was uh, very um, influential to my uh, high school years of just of um, reading that. And um, I'd like to know more about her. It's just, it's a hard hitting book. And I know a lot of people who've read this say that. So it's, that's nothing new, but I would really like to make some progress in this because I did stop during her college years. So I haven't got super, said I'm 190 pages in, but I'm not that far in. <laughs> so I'd like to make some progress in that this year. So those are all the books I'd like to get to. I'm not sure. You notice that the only kind of fantasy or, uh, you know, paranormal or urban fantasy that I put on here was my buddy reads, but I'm pretty sure I'll pick up some other stuff. I have a lot of series that I'm in the middle of. Um, there's a lot of pre-orders coming through like um, Bookshops and Bone Does by Travis Baldry, um, Iron Flame by uh, Rebecca Yaros, and um, oh, I thought there was another one. There might be another pre-order I have coming as well. So I don't know if I'll be able to insert those in um, during November again because I will be writing um, 1,667 words a day. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done. A lot of the nonfiction. Um, I, I'm going to focus on plus my buddy reads and then if I can get to some of the historical fiction that would be nice. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, it just matters on my mood. I'm a big mood reader. We'll see what happens. So anyway, I am going to, uh, that's it. That's what I'm going to hopefully read in November. What are you reading? Are any of these books that you really enjoy that you think I definitely need to pick up? I'm going to do a quick scan here now of my bookshelves and if you find see something that's definitely I can use for fraud, let me know and I will see you guys later. Bye. Okay, so if you saw anything there that I should read for fraud, or even if there's a nonfiction book you think I definitely need to pick up sooner rather than later, let me know, and I will see you guys later. Bye.